All right. Hello. All right, we're, back. we're back. We're back. Nice. Nice. Right out of the gate. Welcome Fresh to up. the obligatory podcast with Kermit and Mike. This is Mike Hurley. And it's Kermit. And this is February 13th, 2018, the day before Valentine's Day, lovers. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah there's they just really, I mean, it creeps up every year, but this year especially. Like, I remember a week or so ago, I saw Valentine's Day candy, like, at you Walgreens or whatever. Do I celebrate? Hell no. I, I get something for the kids. I get something for their mom. I get something for their mom from the kids. It, it's an obligation. That, that old angle. Yeah, you realize it. You know, like really what you kind of want to do is like when Valentine's Day comes around and their mom doesn't get anything from the kids, you kind of want to be on her side and look at the kids and go, yeah, what the hell? You didn't get your mom anything for Valentine's Day? But, you know, there's but deep down, you don't give a shit. There's seven and four. I kind of right. got to still be involved. And, you know, that's the thing about like Christmas and birthdays and everything else. Like I make sure the brothers give each other great gifts. And like the gifts for me are always like these little minor afterthought things. So they're going their whole life thinking that. You know, oh, daddy always gets me shitty gifts, but my brother always gets me the greatest stuff. Yeah, <laughs> your your brother didn't put dollar one in on that, okay? He I, he barely wanted to get out of bed to sign the card for you. There, when you listen to this 15 years from now, you know who was behind everything <laughs> good in your life. Yeah, yeah. when you make your kid listen to your podcast 15 years, <laughs> What I'm really hoping <laughs> is that they just don't listen to it and realize all the shit I talked for years. And they're like, actually, maybe that will save them some bills, you know? You know, there's a lot of kids that are, like, growing up thinking, I don't think my dad ever liked me or even wanted me. And they'll actually have those answers to go forward with. They'll okay. listen to the podcast and be like, no, I was right. All my all my <laughs> fears were justified by listening to this podcast. But enough frizzle frazzle. What would you do this weekend, man? I um, I was in Daytona. Was that Daytona? Porthole? Port oh, you were back at the porthole. Back at the porthole. Uh, for, for those of you who listen, you'll remember uh, Kermit and I were at the porthole probably about, what, two, two three weeks ago like, now? Yeah, two, three weeks ago. And uh, we, were, we were a little nervous about going there because uh, a, comedian, <laughs> a comedian a month or so <laughs> earlier had been attacked on stage at that show. You were nervous. I, I wasn't too nervous. I know how to use a mic stand to defend myself. <laughs> you know, if I taught comedy class, I w first of all, I would never – teach a comedy class i substitute but i would never teach my You're own a substitute teacher i am a substitute class. teacher at two different comedy classes <laughs> and the <laughs> first thing you. the first thing i tell people when i'm covering for is the day here? is uh here's rule number one of comedy never pay for a comedy class yeah, that's rule number one <laughs> but since you're here and you spent the money let's make the best of it but um if i ever taught a comedy class it wouldn't be about how to write jokes or how to be funny it'd be how to use the microphone stand as a defensive weapon. To hit a weapon. motherfucker yes. in the face. <laughs> yes. That's why people laugh at me for bringing my own microphone stand with me, but I can't I can't deal with those tripod stands. Number one, they got no weight to them. Number two, they're usually broken, so when you pick it up to move it behind you, one of the legs gets all, like, gimpy and falls back in. But oh, like, that's it, why you always make me change that shit. That's out. why we... Like, What's the oh, dude, deal? that thing's, like, a good 10 pounds, and it swings like a mace, like a medieval mace. Like, seriously, you got the high ground. It's like, you know, Jedi training stuff. You got that the high ground. fly off like that video of that guy? Oh, saw that well, one, see, swung the mistake is he, he let go. He swung. Like, that. that's things I could clear up in my class, you know? <laughs> How to mash in a face and still keep holding your own weapon you're a martial arts guy you never want to get rid of your weapon you know if you hold Turns on to it staff. yeah don't let don't let people take your weapon from you you know <laughs> how many of these how many of these people tell uh women and guys like if you're gonna buy a gun don't think that the gun is the safest thing because if if you don't know how to use it, it's the quickest thing to be taken from you and used against you. Is that, is that the rule is? I, I don't know. I don't know. I just watched some of it. Oh, you sent out a video last week that I was I was pissing myself watching. Oh, the lady? The lady who was showing oh, us how to karate. take on. There was, a, there was a guy who had a gun to her head. <laughs> and another her. one had a gun to her belly like she was pregnant. Well, and I this guy had pregnant. a problem with the baby. Yeah. <laughs> He was like, oh, right, this is how it's going to go down. But then she's like, this is how you deal with two armed attackers. And she did something. And then she says, now one more time in slow motion. I'm like, I thought that was slow motion. <laughs> like, I thought there is no way that works in the street. There's no uh, way you don't die and get popped. And what I loved is she did like all movie style where uh, not only did she break the first ones, not only did she break the first ones, you know, uh, uh, aim on her. But with a flick of her wrist, she also Dude. made it so he shot himself. 
and and, and it, it was so bad. It was obviously how bad it was. And and people believe some someone believes that bullshit too. Yeah, someone's gonna go out there and do that. She was stuff. confident enough to put that shit on YouTube. That wasn't like a. She was like, oh, this, this works mm-hmm. against two attackers. Yeah, and yet you go to someone like you who has what is that dinging? That's your. That's got to be you. I don't have anything that dings. Oh. I don't there. have anything that dings. There, it was a laptop. You took it. Wow. <laughs> it's t- it's taken us so many times. We've learned turn the mics on. We've learned turn the phones <laughs> off. I thought it was your phone. And now we're learning turn the laptop. Uh, to, wow. My bad. You know what? We're still learning. We're my still bad. learning. I'm going to take that as a learning. That was just a big F up. Yeah. But, no, nah, if you go up to someone like you who has martial arts training and says, if a guy has a gun to your head you're and someone else has a gun to your belly, what do you do? And you're like, you die. You die. That, that's, yes, what, you that's, that's what happens. Oh. You've let them get way too close as it is. Dude, that whole video. Oh, man. I'm going to put it up when we see it. It's so good. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of every movie where the bad guy has, like, this badass martial artist dead to rights. He's 15 feet away with a gun. But he decides he's going to walk in. After you've seen this guy take out 20 people of your, like, like every Jason Statham movie, you know? It's like, uh, all right, Jason Statham just beat up 15 different armed guys and now the bad guy's like that will be enough mr whatever your name is and then jason states i was like oh no i'm screwed but then the guy starts monologuing and walks like okay down on your knees and then ha- like really dude yeah. take a couple of cheap shots from 15 feet away take out his knees take out his arms and then walk up if you have to and monologue but only when you're sure he's gonna bleed out anyways you know it's ridiculous i just Swat. Uh, she's swatting. She's like swatting away. Yeah, it was a double swat. <laughs> it's like a double swat. It was so shitty. And she's like, "Oh, this will work at a at a close encounter attack only." I'm like, really, bitch? And you know what? It it was still a hundred times better than when you see those martial arts guys that don't even touch anybody. What's that called? The bullshit. G? bullshit. The right? bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> the, the bullshit. bullshit. Yeah, where they, Gotti. where they just and it, it's very. Uh, it's almost. I don't, I don't know what is that. What is that like? Mass hypnosis that the whole class is it's, paying. It's the, yeah, it's it's got bullshit. It's a bullshit uh, martial arts style. Yeah, I, shit to Ryu. I, I've I, <laughs> I've seen the videos where it's like Chi Master takes on MMA guy, and it never works out for not once. Never. Because the problem is. If you're fighting a chi master, the only way the chi master wins is if you two are also a practitioner. Yeah, if none of you guys are slapping the shit out of each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. God. I want to go to these uh, seminars. Mm -hmm. I want to find one. I think we should go. To one of these? Yes, like a real, like, we need to find Maybe we should take someone with no fight experience whatsoever and put them against. I don't think you need to have any experience. Just go in there and just. Oh, you want to take a chi class? Yeah, and, like, pretend we believe in it and then Uh just. Slap the shit out of one of them and <laughs> see what happens. I mean, we'll lose like 80 bucks that we paid for. Mm-hmm. But, but it, it would be worth the it'll be worth investigation. It. It'd be worth I don't know, though, because you can pull up the videos, and there's like there's at least 30 videos of this not working out too well. <laughs> and you feel bad because it's always like this 90-year-old little Chinese guy. Not who, as white people, too. I did see one... One and they're white, always out of quote shape. Unquote, master. Yeah. Well, why would you be in shape <laughs> when all you got to do is just. You have energy force. You yeah. Have, yeah. <laughs> you have Don't get me wrong. I more than anyone would love to believe something like that existed. You know, I would just. I think we all have sat in a room and gone like this, trying to close a door. Oh, like, yeah. Ah, fuck. Oh, yeah. Move clouds, <laughs> stuff yeah. like that. But. I don't know. Hey, if we're wrong and you're listening and you actually do. I challenge it, you. Come in. I challenge Come in. We'll do it the same day as the Pam Burrito <laughs> Eating Contest. We'll do a Chi MMA burrito fight. Shit your pants off. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking of you today, actually. Um, oh, yeah? Because I'm, I'm working tomorrow, <laughs> Valentine's Day. So I asked the kids if they wanted to go out to dinner, you know, tonight. Okay. And they wanted to go to uh, the Pizzeria Uno because they, okay. like, they like – they let the kids make their own pizza. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, like you go there and they bring out like the dough, which is already spread out, and then they bring out like a side of. So they're recruiting. And all of a sudden, as soon as we got there, I realized I'm like, holy shit, this is like pizzeria, uh, melting pot. 
This is oh, exactly this bullshit, yeah. like if Kermit was here, he'd be flipping over <laughs> trays like, no, dude, I didn't come here to make my own fucking dinner. I'm not making my own dinner. That's just they're just recruiting your kids to make pizza. They did. My kids made they brought them out these aprons and everything. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. When you turn 18, <laughs> come to me. <laughs> oh, my God, One more job skill, <laughs> like <laughs> pumping gas and making pizzas. Mm. There's <laughs> things you can do. So um, what else? You were, So you were at the porthole. How did the shows go? Who were you? Uh, who Friday, were you? Saturday. Yeah. Uh, it was um, headlining Jersey, and then featuring was Marley Star. Oh, we okay. had a good time. Yeah, full house. I got no, I got yeah, full house. Uh-huh. No complaints. Yeah, yeah. Man, no, no, no one got punched in the no face. Violence. No, no violence. No violence. Smacked around. I got offered drugs again, so that's always fun. Yeah, why? See, why? <laughs> how often do you get offered drugs at a show? Whenever you I have, even, a, you don't even do drugs. That's, humor, a, that's which how is I amazing. judge. That's how I judge my sets, mm-hmm. my comedy set. Like how well? How yeah, well how well. You did? If mm-hmm. I get offered drugs, I did really, really well. Mm-hmm. If I only get offered like a drink mm-hmm. or just a handshake, mm-hmm. I didn't do too well. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I did uh, Thursday. I was in where was I? Thursday I was in West Chase, Florida, which is over by Tampa, which is a very, very trendy upscale area. And uh, yeah, that show I walked in and it was a bar show, but it was like a really nice bar restaurant, but the worst possible setup for comedy. It's like, uh, you know how sometimes you go in a restaurant, it's got like that half wall that runs down the middle of the restaurant to separate sections. It's probably like a four or five, probably your eye level wall, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that just bitch. separates like high tops on this side and boosts on this yeah, side. Yeah, I know you're talking about now. So, yes. yeah. So they had one of those that was probably a good four feet tall. And my level. Yeah. And that's where they had. Like, on one side of it was this little, probably six-by-six six area where they're like, okay, that's where we're doing comedy, and everybody's sitting on the other side of the wall. So, number one, you're doing comedy where they can only see you from the chest up. And I don't know why, man. It just took me forever that night. To, like, it went fine. Is that you, the one that was, like, the whole, like, uh, parents? or I don't know. I saw the flyer. It was, like, you with a bunch of other people. Oh, under. no, no. That was actually um, – that, that was Saturday night. That was down in Boca Raton at the Meisner Park. Uh, comedy club and uh that was total opposite that was so parents it, night out or something like that uh, everybody on the show was a parent okay so it was that like was florida's funniest parents that's what it was we had like uh that was a benjamin lease books that show and for uh comic cure is the name of his organization they do a lot of not non-profit sh- charity shows and stuff like that but uh, that area is ridiculously wealthy, classy, everything else. And I went in there, and it was just done up so well and everything. And so that's that's just comedy, though. I mean, Thursday night, you're at this knockoff, upscale Applebee's with no sight lines trying to do comedy for 30 people who were there to watch the lightning game, you know. That's you again. That's not me. All right, that's me. That's you, man. That's me, and I thought I was off. <laughs> nice. All right. So and it was off. Yeah, I like how you try to blame that shit quickly on. Oh, me. you mean like when you're little? Why would my laptop vibrate? And you're like, that's your phone. <laughs> <laughs> but why would my laptop vibrate? We'll this. Too much technology, man. You got <laughs> way too much technology going on. But yeah, with comedy, that's it's so funny because you know Thursday night you're out there. Friday night I was in Largo, Florida, which is out by Tampa, and that was the place I was telling you about. I went last year. Total down and dirty bar show. One of those places where there's 120 people in a room, not much bigger than our studio, and everybody's smoking. Like uh, last year, I was there and got a sinus infection the next day. And Four I people w- smoking. Yeah, I worked. <laughs> I worked in smoking bars. You're weak ass, devious septum. <laughs> I worked in smoking bars, like t- ten years, where people are just like smoking all day. Back when I was bartending, but now I'm just so accustomed to not being around it. I've never been a smoker. So it like as soon as I walk into a room that's filled with smoke, it automatically does stuff to like you got those little hairs in your nose and your throat that if you're a smoker, they they're gone. But if you're like, don't smoke, they're always right there. And this year I'm like, uh, yeah, I'll be standing outside right till you call my name. So they did the host. They did the guest spot. They did the feature. And then they're like, you're on stage. And it was funny. It was like. You're on stage for 45 minutes, but the spotlight, all you can see, it looks like clouds. It's like a miss. It, it, it had its own weather storm <laughs> front just moving through and stuff. But, uh, yeah, it turned out to be a great show there. It was just – it was totally different to go from down and dirty bar show to the next night you're there at these places where these people might as well have been wearing tux for a charity event down in Boca. And, uh, yeah, that show went great. Um, on that show with me was um, a girl that I started – she was already doing comedy 
when I started, but Lisa Correo, and she's been doing great. Uh, it's a Tampa comic, right? No, no. She started out as a South Florida comic. I believe she's based out of L.A. now. Uh, she was dating a guy named Forrest Shaw. I'm not sure if they're still together, but Forrest <laughs> Shaw. <laughs> Why do you know this? Because these are all people you come up with. But right. Forrest Shaw, is he's got a couple of great uh, CDs out. Oh, he's a comedian, too. Yeah, okay. yeah. I thought he was just got, like a regular dude. No, like, no. Dude. He's got a couple of CDs out, but he's also the road opener for uh, Ian Bag. So, or no, I'm sorry, not Ian Bag. Jim Jeffries. He's the road opener for Jim Je- Jeffries. Really funny dude. And Lisa uh, used to be an opener for uh, Lewis. Was it Lewis Black? No, not Lewis Black. Uh, Richard Lewis. Like Richard oh. Lewis would come through the improvs and she would open for him. Uh, but she's also been opening for Patton Oswalt a lot lately. Oh, okay. His road opener. And I hadn't seen her perform in probably like four or five years, and she killed it. She was hysterical. Like, she went up second. Lisa was it? Lisa Correo. Correo. And she was just, she, everything she did was just bam, 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 bam. It was great. It's like I'm booked as the headliner. I'm watching her in the second like spot. The, just like Yeah, you have to follow this. Mm. Well, there was a, a feature spot in between us. Uh, this guy, I want to say his name was Chris Presentier. Chris Presentier. And he's a guy uh hasn't been in comedy too long, but he's a teacher turned comedian. So I heard one of those before, which is also what Lisa was. So it's amazing. I think I was the only one on the bill who never taught never had a real job. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I had I had plenty of quote unquote real jobs. Just not as many as you, though, Mr. Friggin Jamaican <laughs> bobsled team over there. Do Jamaicans have more jobs? And I don't know. I'm Hispanics? thinking about the I'm thinking about the in living color sketch where it was like you remember watching in living color yep. where they had was it uh, was it Jamaican family or a Haitian family? And it was just like. When I was your age, I had eight jobs. What you do, you lazy. <laughs> I don't remember the actor doing it, but yeah, uh, I remember the skit briefly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so well, that's uh, cool. What else you been doing? You been uh, watching any movies this week? Anything good? Like, hey, we'd like to apologize. Black <laughs> I Panther. Say, that, I see where you're going Black with Black Panther did not come out <laughs> last week. Uh, yeah, I'd like to point out Kermit was the one telling you that. I was just backing him up, but you know, yeah, it, comes it comes out, out this week. week. This week. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I did. Uh, we did kind of get ready. Uh, you know, uh, I was watching upstairs on my laptop. Oliver and I were watching. What Civil do you mean you got ready? I got ready for Black Panther coming out. Uh, like, oh, you watched the movies? Yeah, like. Uh, I thought you meant you went and got like unintentional. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> uh, no, unintentionally. Upstairs, Ali and I were watching uh, Civil War. And downstairs, Aiden, we didn't know it, but he was watching um, Amazing Spider-Man Homecoming. Okay. Spider-Man Homecoming. So I'm like, wow, we're all gonna gearing up for it. I thought you were going a different route with this. No. Oh, what? Like, we got costumes ready? Like, ago? I thought you went and bought, like, <laughs> like, tribal outfits and just this white family going to walk into the theaters dressed as African people. <laughs> Oh, that would have been great to see that that meme. What it? <laughs> what it have been? That would have been great for not for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, for you, I yeah. guess. But yeah, I saw some meme the other day. Um, I guess it was you know how Facebook has those little bots. Like if you mention a movie, some bot comes in. Yeah, like oh, you should watch, watch it here. Movie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> some someone had mentioned Black Panther, and one of those bot comes in and goes, "Watch Black Panther now." Blah blah blah. Already bootleg. Yeah. <laughs> And then the guy wrote back, he's like, shut up, man. We're paying for this one. <laughs> you know, I was like, Th- that should tell you That's how funny. important this movie is <laughs> to the community. That's funny. Yeah. So, yeah, Black Panther, whatever. It'll be good when it comes out. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I heard a lot of bad shit about it. Have you? Not you bad. It's like the, the like, uh, you know, again, back to your people. They're just shitting all over it. Damn, why does it always come back to my people? White people, man, they try to ruin good things. Like what? Name one thing white people have done wrong ever. Columbus? <laughs> you <want> to- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should we yeah. start there? You know, just what about Columbus? <laughs> Should we just start there? Yeah, what about Columbus? What, do you mean, what about Columbus? What about Columbus? Well, clearly he didn't discover uh, America. Or where or the land he took it from the Indians. D- yeah, I'm take is such a strong word. <laughs> <laughs> he sure the hell didn't borrow it. Yeah, it, uh, you know he thought it was a fair trade, a necklace for everything. You know? A necklace for <laughs> everything. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. But I just heard a lot of bad press. Uh, not press, but uh, there's like a, a lot of bad things. They're trying to shit on Black Panther. But we were t- we talked about it last week. Mm. That's yeah. all. I just saw a bunch of like really shitty uh, Photoshop. Mm-hmm. 
uh, memes on Black Panther. I was like, damn, that's, oh, okay. that's yeah. racist. You finally saw Jumanji. Did you see Jumanji? The Rock one? Yeah. Yeah, it was good. You liked it? I did like it. You liked it? You <laughs> <laughs> about to shit on me because I liked it? No, no, no. You liked I, it? You yeah, liked it? It, was, it, was, it was just really, uh, I, think, I think the uh, whole part of it I had a problem with. Not even a problem with it. It's like, okay, I get it. You're a game that launches people into an alternate reality, blah, blah, blah. But I like when they come home and bring it home and it's a board game. And he's like, oh, what's this? Who does board games? And he puts it on a shelf. And I like the... Oh, then it transforms. Then it transformed into a game. Like, into a yeah, was, and a shitty video game console uh, on that. Yeah. <laughs> Holy damn, like, not even an Xbox. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a console with the big... With duel. a cartridge, with <laughs> the old style cartridge. Like, like, I get why they did it like that, you know? But at the same time, it was kind of like... Mm. Everything else totally 100% believable on board. With, you know? <laughs> the movie was fine, though. I thought it was funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, there were some good parts. I think Jack Black was probably the best part of the whole movie. Like, the way he uh, he didn't overplay the part. Of the, like, or the female. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Like, at some point in the movie, you just <laughs> become believable that that's a female <laughs> in his body. Like, it just... Yeah, so, yeah, I was a sucker for all the penis jokes. Like, these things are so cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, How do you movie. use this thing? <laughs> what, you saw that this past weekend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah. Movie talk, blah, blah, blah. Man, I'm going through some bullshit right now. What's wrong? I'm getting old. Like, I'm feeling it. What are you? I'm 35. Yeah, but you look 12. Yeah, but I'm feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just have no motivation to work out. Really? Yeah, like I'm supposed to be. You go to the doctor. You check your uh, your your T count there. And make sure it's not your. I haven't been to a doctor, and but there's there's a there's a check. Oh yeah. What yeah, do you mean yeah. a, your T count? What's that? Your, your testosterone. Your testosterone oh. level. Like once you get to your mid thirties, you automatically it doesn't produce as much. So they check that. Yeah, yeah. There's actually. I never a got checked out before. And like, oh yeah, yeah. You should get checked, and that's actually why you start like uh, crying at commercials and. You just get sluggish during the day and I everything never, else. I haven't cried uh, in years. Actually, pff, uh, get ready for some good times, my friend. No, man. Uh, Ralphie May actually was the one who told me about it the first time I worked with him. He was like, uh, he was telling me, he's like, yeah, you know, I've always felt slow and sluggish lately. And part of me is going, <laughs> he's, mm. I mean, <laughs> but yeah, but he knew he knew his weight issues more than anyone. But he actually went and started getting like uh, injections and doing injections to bring it up. And he's like, dude, and he's like, now I'm. You know, there's no more naps during the middle of the day. You know, I'm more active. I'm happier. I'm not as depressed. I want to go work out, stuff like that. Yeah, man. You should, you I should just bought me some pre-workout recently, and I'm just going to see what happens. I never took in pre-workout. What's pre-workout supposed to do? It's supposed to, like, boost your, boost your focus and your endurance and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I never took it. I never took it pre-workouts. I never took really protein shakes and all that stuff. Yeah. I know I'm supposed to, but mm -hmm. I just eat regular meals. Yeah. And now I'm going to jump on this bandwagon of mm -hmm. pre-workouts. Does it come highly recommended from someone you admire? No. From, uh, <laughs> from <laughs> who was it? Ray Pac? <laughs> no, it, it came from Amazon and me buying it from there. <laughs> Man, you can't be buying stuff off Amazon. It's all right. It's legit. Mm -hmm. It had five stars. Let me rephrase that. You can buy stuff off Amazon. You shouldn't buy anything you're going to put in your body off we'll Amazon. We'll find out when I'm all jacked up <laughs> in mm -hmm. two weeks. We'll see what happens. I don't know, man. Did you see uh, for a while people were selling like those, uh, what are those, the, uh, the, the hard drives, the sticks, the memories, USBs, the USB, USBs. Uh, yeah, they were just, uh, they were taking regular like eight gigabyte USBs and just reprinting 64 gigabyte USB on the outside. What do you mean? Like on Amazon, there was a whole scam going on with like USBs and stuff like that. Like, because you know what well, you pay, uh, you know, 12 bucks for an eight gigabyte USB or something like that. Okay. And then people are like, oh, no, this one's a 64 gigabyte for twenty nine ninety nine. Wow, that's a great deal. But all they had done was like reprint it on the casing 64. So you get it. You get it home. You put it on. You're like, yeah, this works fine. And then you're using it. You're using it. And by the time you realize it's not 64 gigabytes, like they reprogram the code and everything. So when you look online, it goes, uh, and then you realize, man, 
how come my 64 gigabytes slowing down and not holding anything over eight? Gi- oh, <laughs> it was probably made in China or some shit like that. Oh, wow. Do you think America can't make as good a counterfeits as the Chinese? What are you un-American? We yeah. can rip off anyone just as well as any other but country, it, my friend. It's from China. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why when you're shopping on Amazon, you're like, don't maybe not always go for the lowest. Do you price pay for prime? You got to pay for prime, though. I got prime. See, you got, that's what you got to do. You can't be playing that bullshit. Mm. Got that protection plan and everything. Always. Got that over. By the way, shipping. weird transition. I was kind of, I had, I lost you for a little bit. Why? Because we were talking about pre workouts and then you went into USBs. Well, so. you were talking about shit I had no idea about. <laughs> <laughs> so it's two levels. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you talking pre-workout, about. Pre workout. Pre workout. Pre workout. That is the time I call between 22 and 41. <laughs> pre workout. Because that's what I've been doing, just waiting to work out. Uh, yeah. You, I was like, what the hell is he talking oh, about? Man, but I got, I, okay, I'm now I'm back on track. I'm so out of shape. Tonight they uh tonight the What'd you eat today? <laughs> Let's go over it. What'd you wake up and eat? Nothing. You didn't eat okay, so what'd you eat for lunch? Nothing. For dinner. Okay. Yeah, that's when we went to uh Pizzeria Uno and I ordered a <laughs> I ordered a burger because you go to a pizza place and order a burger the same way you yeah, go. Yeah, what the to, hell's wrong with you? Yeah, I wasn't in the mood for pizza. But the, you went to Uno. The kids were making their own. I ordered a pizza. It came out. Or I ordered burger. a burger. It came out. Like, I asked medium rare, and it came out pretty much raw and cold. When something comes out raw and cold, you should probably send it back. And you still ate it. Yeah, man. I had to get here. We were in a hurry. So, I did um, not rush you. Yeah. No, I rushed myself. But the, we did stick around for dinner or for dessert. And uh, they have something there. It's just called, like, Huge Piece of Chocolate Cake, I think. Yeah, that's what they zone, Pizzone? No, no, it's a huge piece of chocolate cake for dessert. Oh. And they brought it over. They're like, yeah, well, it feeds six. And I'm like, okay, well, there's four of us, you know. And, uh, yeah, it, I was like, Psh, we can take it down. And, oh, man, that was a huge – like, I'm not even – I'm not even making cakes for the kids' birthdays anymore. I'm just going to go there and pick up a slice. I was going to say, did you finish the whole damn cake? Oh, dude, I tried. It, it was huge. It was so huge. Like, I should have brought more here. Like, while I was eating, I was like, maybe we should ha- maybe we should bring this in for the burrito eating contest. What is it, a chocolate? It's just chocolate cake with, See, like, a chocolate ganache. You don't like chocolate? Not chocolate, What's wrong chocolate with you? cake. Nope. What's wrong with you? It's what, gross. What do you eat? Chocolate's not chocolate, gross? chocolate cake. You probably like nuts. I do like nuts. Yeah, you do. But not like nuts those in nuts. your mouth. <laughs> nuts in your mouth. All the ooh, chocolate. Ooh, give me nuts. It's caramel on top. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with me, man? What I don't is eat the you chocolate like, chocolate cake. I don't like it. Why not? Just don't like it. Man. I I don't trust people who don't like. like I don't like. I eat chocolate, but not like chocolate cake. I don't mm-hmm. like chocolate ice cream either. Wow. Well, uh, what well, you like? Vanilla. No, clearly I like chocolate. My girlfriend's black, but still. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, just not chocolate <laughs> really? ice cream or chocolate cake. Really? That's where I troll the line. Wow, man. I like I like how that goes right to your defense mechanism every time. It's yeah, like, anytime I get, yeah, hey, my it, girlfriend's black. We were talking about desserts, and you just felt like the need to throw in that. <laughs> and may I say this? Your girlfriend's like milk chocolate, all right? She's like light chocolate. Like She's, it, she's like, if I had to go chocolate... <laughs> <laughs> you went the closest to white you could oh, go and no, still go chocolate. No. That's exactly what you did. <laughs> You're like, mm, this will give me some plausible deniability to cover my racism. It makes me go into Black Panther. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, hat. you are not going to do well with the Black Panther. You almost got your ass kicked at Harry Potter two weeks ago <laughs> <laughs> for insulting geeks about their choice of houses. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Yeah. But still, no. But yeah, man, I don't like chocolate or chocolate ice cream or whatever. It's mm. gross. So what is what is your go to dessert? Go to dessert? Mm-hmm. Um I just, I like cookies, man. Yeah? But yeah. not chocolate cookies. I do not like chocolate chocolate cookies, but mm-hmm. I eat chocolate chip cookies. Mm-hmm. Just just the right amount of chocolate. Just the right a mix. Yeah. Just yeah. a lot of brown with a few <laughs> just <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> Like a huge expansive area of brownness with a few it's chocolates sprinkled wrong. in. Uh huh. No, nah, man, we're learning so much about you. <laughs> it's coming like I'm looking at the llama poster again. I'm like, that's exactly what his chocolate chip cookie looks like. That's looked exactly like. how I like my chocolate. Just <laughs> one like, chip per just cookie. One chip per cookie. <laughs> it's almost like a scavenger hunt. <laughs> See if I don't make those for your birthday. Chocolate chip cookies that just, just have one, one chip. That's enough. And you're, everything else is white chocolate or white. What the. F- <laughs> Uh, wow, 
okay. you and your brown privilege, just free to say whatever you want. It's a good poster, but anyways. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so, you got any big plans for Valentine's Day? You guys doing anything? She works, man. I'm just yeah. going to hear about myself. She's going to be saving lives. I don't know. I, 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 you're, you're working. You're, wor- you're doing the yeah, open mic. Yeah, I'm hosting the open mic at the Orlando Improv uh, tomorrow night. Um, I don't know what's going on on the main stage tomorrow night. You Eric sh- Myers. Is it? Is yeah. it Eric Myers? And then some other person from oh. Tampa. Improv, Orlando. That's that's funny because Carm called me to get the night off. I just assumed he wanted to take out the girl, but if Eric's in town, he's probably on that show. He's probably on the show. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. We'll be hosting the open mic, in, or I'll be hosting. You going to make it out? I don't got no new jokes, man. I haven't, s- haven't had time to sit down and That write. hasn't stopped you in like a year. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. Yeah, be that guy, man. Same jokes. Yeah. No, I'd, that's kind of like why I took the kids out to Darren tonight because I'd, I'd rather, yeah, I'd rather make money <laughs> on the holiday. Than, plus, how you feel about, like, uh, th- does your, are you guys exchanging presents? Are you For doing Valentine's? Yeah. I don't know what she's doing. I, I, got, her, I got her a couple gifts. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I bought some fake flowers. Fake flowers. Fake roses. Fake roses. Yeah, well, from right. Joanne Fabrics. Cost well, okay. me like five bucks. Wow. And they look real. So the gifts you got are were they like gifts you're supposed to get, or were they like gifts that you listen and listen? And you're like, okay, I know what she wants. Yeah, that's one of those. Yeah, she it's one of those. Like, I need new earrings, and I just bought her some earrings. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. That's it. Nothing romantic, but we're not gonna hang out till the weekend. Yeah. So and I don't have any gigs this weekend, so it works out. <laughs> No, what you got coming up? Nothing this weekend. I, I was supposed to be at weekend. I was supposed to be at Lake Nona. Um, Devin Seabold ran a room out there for like three years, and he hit me up uh, like a month ago. He's like, "Hey, can you?" And it happened that I was in town, and I was like, "Yeah, I'd love to do it. Why not? It's a nice little country club gig." And he's like, "Okay, they need you to be clean." I'm like, "Yeah, that's fine. Fucking whatever." And then uh, <laughs> <laughs> I need you to be clean. Yeah, fucking. That's fucking fine. Whatever. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah. And then. Uh, you know, uh, I saw him post something in a chat room like, any other comics have problems with the venue wanting you to carry the full insurance when they book a comedy show? And, like, automatically I started going, yeah, this isn't good. Yeah. And then, sure enough, like, uh, he gave me a call last week, and he's like, hey, man, uh, yeah, he'd been with them for three years working with a different, I guess, activities director over there. And it was always, they book the show, you go in, you do the show. But now the new activities director is expecting him to carry the insurance, which I don't understand because what do you mean the insurance? Well, a lot of times when you have events, someone's the insurer. Usually it's the venue that has coverage. You know, if someone slips and falls on property or something like that. And usually that's covered. Uh, If you rent like if you rented out a ballroom for a wedding, you're the price you're paying and you're in DJ and stuff. like this. You understand this. Uh, the price you're paying usually covers the use of their facility, and a lot of times it falls under their insurance for that property. Right. Sometimes they'll have you sign a waiver, meaning you know your company is going to cover the insurance. But there's always someone that if someone accidentally slips, someone can sue. You know, and I guess I didn't know that they did that for comedians though. Well, no, and that's why a lot of these places like uh, Bonkers and everything, they sign contracts where the venue is hiring Bonkers, not where Bonkers is a partner with the venue or a- anybody, Funny Business or Comedy Zones or stuff like that, you know? Okay. So it, it really is just how you phrase it in the contract. Uh, but I guess this new property manager was, like, expecting uh, Devin as the – as the producer of the show to have like a million dollars liability on the performance, it's which crazy. you can get a million dollar liability um, insurance for performing for fairly cheap. Back when I was doing a lot more of the like fire eating and dangerous stuff, I actually had a policy right. where everything was covered if there was damage to myself or damage to the building. But um, yeah, it's, it's it, honestly in the situations where we do, it's kind of pointless. I mean, you think about all those gigs we show up that are bars that become comedy clubs the night we're there. They're going under the bar's insurance. You know, right. It's not like, oh, no, this is your night. But especially at a country club where it's like, hello, you're putting this on for your members. This should be covered by you guys. So long story short, I lost that gig. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> so in other words, you ain't got shit to do this weekend. I don't have anything. I think I'm taking the kids shoe shopping. I think that's the big adventurous. Yay. But uh, I also want to go out and get stuff we need for here because, you know, every week we got a good game plan what we're going to do. And every week you're like, yeah, I'll send you over the link for that. And then every week I end up here and I'm like, hey, man. Uh, well, I, 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 the link. I find it funny because I'm just like lounging in this comfy chair and I just look at you mm-hmm. and you're in that stool. Mm-hmm. With no back, I feel bad. I kind of feel bad, but I don't. I don't feel bad, man. This is your studio. This, still. this is your studio. I gotta get a better lighting. That's so for sure. Give me, yeah. You've learned a little bit about like this is a learning as we go type thing, and that you know that's part of the reason. Uh, I don't think either one of us is really pushing anything yet. I'm putting it up there, but we're like, putting it up there. Yeah. But you know, hopefully, this is something where we do it enough, and then you know, like even Bill Burr said, he he just did it for years and years and years, and didn't really take off till. You came know. out of a special. Yeah. So hurry the fuck up. Me. <laughs> yeah, you, man. Me. You got like hours plus material. I got five The minutes. longer you do it, the less time you feel you have. <laughs> you know? That's why, <laughs> what was that? I was, ho- I was filling in hosting open mic for Karma a couple of weeks ago, and some guy closed out his five minutes of bombing with like, just so you know, this is my first time performing. But everybody there was like, yeah, we figured <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, we figured that. <laughs> but then he's like, but you're going to see a lot of me. Because, like, right now I got, like, two hours and I'm ready to go. And when I took him down, I'm like, you know, that's the funniest thing. I've been doing this for 10 years, and I think I have three minutes. By the <laughs> way, is that was it a white guy? I'm going to say he was one of yours. Oh, he's a Hispanic dude? Yep. I think I know his exact. I already seen him. Yeah? I, mean, I played him off on Monday. Oh, really? Yeah. Where were you at on Other Monday? bar. Or not this, last not this Monday. last Monday. Yeah, not this Monday. Yeah. Last Monday. He was up there at another bar. Uh huh. And, and he going kept, over his time. And I freaking blasted the music, and well, he still wouldn't get the hell off. Well, you know, he's got two off. hours to get through. <laughs> you know. But no, that's the thing. I mean, before you start comedy, you sit there with notebooks full of stuff, and you're just like, and once you start doing it, you realize. And two jokes are the best. Yeah, two jokes are the best. And guess what? Someone already did those. You know, so. There's just so much stuff like you, you, uh, you need to get out there. You need to be part of the scene. You need to be getting up and performing. And you need to learn that just because you wrote it in the notebook and it got yourself a giggle, uh, it, it might not play out. I got notebooks and notebooks full of stuff that are filled with either jokes I'll never do, jokes that I thought were funny five years ago, but they're just stupid. Or there's also this is the reason I know I don't throw things out. Because there's things I've written down that I know are funny, but I don't know how to say it or do it or oh, present it right. properly for a larger audience. And so many of the jokes I do now are no- jokes I went back through. And there's jokes you do early on that bomb, and you never do them again. But you look back on five years later, and now you're a little bit more confident. You know how to write, or you know your persona. And you go back, and you're like, why didn't I? Oh, because it bombed once? Let me try it. And when you hit it with that new confidence and put that new twist on. and So, yeah, I never throw anything out. But, yeah, to just be like, man, this is my first time on stage and I got two hours worth of material. I'm like, mm. I always like the guys that do the joke and they go, man, that was a lot funnier in my head. <laughs> like, no shit. Like <laughs> after every joke. <laughs> and I was going to say a name. Yeah. I was say, oh, like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And you'll even see, like, the professionals. I love that. Like, on a real special, you'll see a professional not edit out a joke that didn't go well. And he's like, yeah, huh. thought yeah. you were going to really like that one. That's half of Netflix right now. Yeah. Man, they just slapping the comedy. I think I'm scared it's going to dry the well. Well, I think they're doing a, what they sign on to do, a special every week, to release a special every week. I mean, Chris Rock's coming out with one tomorrow. I didn't even know about it till today. Yeah. yeah. I was like, all right. Looking forward to that, though. But, like, just, like. First one in 10 years. It used to be always a buildup, and now it's just like, oh, by the way, (laughs) there's a special. Yeah. And uh, And then I heard they're doing a 15 minute. um, They're giving, uh, doing like a special for like comedians that only has 15 minutes instead of half an hour. Oh, yeah. Or an hour. So you can get away with doing 15 minutes. uh, A couple of guys we know submitted for that stuff. Did you submit it? No, because I'm one of those guys that, like, if I hear about something, I put it up, like, I hit up all my buddies, like, hey, dude, you should put in for this. But there's also a bunch of guys who hear about something and then they stay they, quiet. They stay quiet. That's bullshit. Yeah, I think you, sh- you should have been on it. Yeah, that's that's how it is, and that's fine. And it's also partly on you, you know. Like, yeah, like right now, Asheville Comedy Fest. I was about to ask you about that because I'm thinking about doing it. Oh, entering dude. entering it and see how where I go. That is hands down the f- my favorite festival I've done yet. Really? Yeah. But does it is it like a festival like oh well thanks for coming out and hanging out or is it like okay is moving my career a little 
No, that one's great because they actually have like bookers and agents come in like and a lot there's a lot of festivals and that's I guess that's a good point. You know, we don't like to talk about stand up too much, but no, but I don't want to do something that's just going to be like I could have just stayed home. Yeah. Uh, some of these festivals are festivals where it's just like, oh, yeah, I got accepted. And then you go and you're doing these little bar shows and there's no <laughs> industry. There's no nothing around. But you're saying, oh, I did this festival. Meanwhile, you got something like the Asheville that's very well organized. They're in their what? Seventh year. I don't know. It doesn't say. Oh, OK. Uh, yeah, uh, that was the first festival I went to where there was 12, 12, 12. Wow. That was the first, that's, that's, that's right. Cause maybe I did it in their eighth year uh, or seventh year. That's the first festival I went to where there was no competitive factor. There was no, Hey, we're looking, we're going to King one of you or queen one of you. Oh, okay. this, which actually changed the whole dynamic of the festival. Because all these other festivals I've been to where there's a competition, it's great. You're seeing friends, but in the back of your head, you're looking at everybody as, I got I to gotta I gotta beat this guy. This I got to be funnier. Yeah. And with that one, you just show up. It's like, hey, congratulations. I think they picked 50 or 60. And they're like, congratulations. You guys are the festival. And then you get your showcase night, and you get your passes to go check out other people. And you just go. And from day one, it was different because – you're just hanging out with all these other comics and like, hey, man, where else do you work? Oh, where else do you work? Oh, let me put in a word for you here, a word for here. And even the club bookers who showed up at that thing, they just see your name on there and they assume you're worth <laughs> at least taking a look at. So they're like, hey, come on over and uh, send me your stuff or blah, blah, blah. I got more work off the Asheville Comedy Festival than any festival I've done. Okay. Just between networking with friends and Asheville itself, before I even started doing comedy, my dad took me there when I was younger. They had some jazz festival during the summer. And I'm like, this is where I want to live. Like, I love the whole... And you ended up here. Well, yeah, <laughs> we were already living in Florida, but I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I could ever go back and do snow. You know, snow was great when I was a kid. Right. But like, if I got to be the guy driving in it and shoveling it and... uh Dude, even Florida, when it's like 64 degrees in the morning, I'm like, mm, I'm not getting out of bed today. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so I'm thinking about entering this and mm -hmm. see if I get lucky enough. Yeah. They, yeah. they cost 25 bucks. Yeah, and I think that's one of the ones you. They but it wants us, like, they want a seven to 10 minute video. I don't even think I have anything up on YouTube. Why not? That's 10 minutes? Yeah, you're so used to getting in competitions without ever putting up videos. It's. I got I got videos up there, but I don't I don't know if it hits the ten minute mark. Am I? You know what? It says seven. Yeah, seven to ten. All right. And uh, you know the other thing with <laughs> I'm just gonna send a roast. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours. Well, you save yourself a trip <laughs> to Asheville. Uh, no. Um. The other thing is, so someone told me before when you're submitting to festivals, have have something like don't just send your regular seven to ten minute because these guys are watching like bookers yeah they'll get a lot of submissions every week when you want to play their club but for festivals in general these guys might be getting like six seven hundred people sending in videos so here's how it is it's like it's like when you're watching a comedy show filled with 20 comics you're like you're gonna watch the first one intently you're gonna watch the second one but by the 18th 19th comic you're just focusing on getting out of there yeah. no matter how funny they are so when you do festival stuff, always make for, make sure you put your strongest stuff at the beginning of the video. They're not going to sit there and watch your build up and your get, get right into your solid stuff. Grab them from the beginning. Front load that video because a lot of times they only watch like the first two, three minutes. They'll say they want seven to ten and we're going to watch them all. But they're human beings like us. They slack at the end of the day. They're hmm. just like, so get your video together. Put your best stuff up front. Something that grabs them. So all right, yeah. I'll do I work on that this week. Yeah. Along with all the other stuff I got to work on. It's a good on time, though. It's a great podcast. festival. Um, let's see. Who did I see? You going to do it again? Uh, yeah. You know, I wanted to do it the past couple of years, but when it was going through, I had already had stuff on the books. But looking I at mean, the dates now. I'm August like, 9th through 11th, and you got to have submissions in by May? Yeah. There should be plenty of time. Yeah. I'm thinking about doing it. May 20th. Jump on it. Yeah, you got plenty of time to go record something specifically for that. I'm only afraid that I have to turn things down. I hate turning good gigs down. Like DJing stuff and stuff like that? No, like comedy. Like, I hate turning down comedy gigs down when I when they uh, ask. Like, it's a good comedy gig Yeah. because of my job. Yeah. 
if they ask for it, like, oh, we need you on a Thursday. I'm like, I can't do it. Yeah. You know, or at least well, I, I'll tell you this, though. It doesn't hurt to have something like being on that festival on your resume. So it's, right. like, it's like a trade-off sometimes because it's like, yeah, you might not be able to make money that week doing comedy, but in the long run, you're adding something else and all the connections you could possibly make there and the work you pick up from compared to not going to it, you know. But, yeah, always always research the festivals. Like, there's some festivals you want to do just because it sounds like a cool time. But truthfully speaking, it's it's time you got to spend your own money to go do these things. <laughs> you know, you're not making money and you're spending money. Like, festivals are funny to me because I'm like, wait a minute, I got to pay for my own hotel? This isn't how this works because every other gig you do, that comes with the gig. Did you ever do the festival here that did in Orlando? Not the Orlando it? Indie Fest. The Orlando Comedy Fest. Not Orlando. That was held over at Sluice. No, there was another one, and it was in a field. What? <laughs> so I got invited to do a fest festival, and I think it was in Ocala or somewhere in the boonies. Mm-mm. Was this the one? It was in Lakeland or around yes. the Lakeland area? Yes. This was like two years ago or yes. something like that. I did not do it, but Charlie Bowie Charlie? was on the stage. I think Ross McCoy was helping pick the axe for yeah, it. Yeah, and they invited So there was me. a stage, and it was, what was it? It sounded like a flea market with a stage It was setup. horrible. Yeah? It was horrible. Like, I, so I was on my way there, and my car broke down. Oh, And wow. it was almost like a thank God, because mm-hmm. I, I was like, oh, I can't make it. And then I saw the photos, mm-hmm. and it was just a field. Nobody's there. Everyone's mm-hmm. sitting on blankets. And then the stage was made on a platform. I saw Next pictures. to a porta potty. I and then people are like shitting and pissing as people are doing sets. Wasn't that one? There was a comic that posted he, uh, during his set, some people walked up and offered him acid. <laughs> yes. And so he yeah. did the acid. He did the acid on stage. I heard that On too. stage. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And it's funny because I was at the Winner's Circle in Lakeland uh, that night, and Charlie <laughs> was opening for me. But he went over there to do a set first. Oh, and boy. then he came over to my, my show, and he was like, <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I heard it was like uh, he was like we were it was like Woodstock we were doing comedy on milk crates under a <laughs> canopy and I'm like uh, that's and that's so why I'm saying check out these festivals before I'm you do I'm so them, glad my know? car broke down because I was on my way and it was like mm-hmm. something I don't know what that happened but but yeah I really do every year I mean to do this too and uh, I'm like ah let me pull up Nashville let me well just festivals in general festivals. I, like I I took a year where I did the uh, uh, I did the Asheville Comedy Festival. Then I did the World Series of Comedy out in Las Vegas. And then I did the Boston Comedy Festival all in one year. And I had a blast. I met a lot of people. But it was also the end of that year is when my second kid was born. And I was like, mm, well, I can't afford to take off weeks to do festivals this year. But some will argue that you can't afford not to do festivals because you can you can be a club comic all your life and you can tour around you can do what we do uh but truthfully if you're going to get to the next level it doesn't do you any good unless someone notices you and that's what festivals are well, about yeah like even preacher will tell you it wasn't america's got talent that got him started he won the uh what was it seattle, seattle. Yeah. comedy festival and from seattle comedy festival is where he got the ner- he had moved out to la but he said he could have got everything he got not based on the move out to L.A. It was the stuff he did at the festivals that got right. the attention. Yeah, he could have stayed in Orlando if he really wanted to. Yeah. But, so, but I mean, so, L.A. is a lot. Well, I got, you know, Pat Garrity lives out in L.A. But if you watch, he is always on the road. Most of the <laughs> comics. That guy is always on the road, man. Yeah. That yeah. Dude him, is- and, him and him. Ricky Ray's are just yeah, always. I didn't traveling. realize how much Ricky Ray's on the road. Oh, I thought he's yeah. just always here. Yeah, no, no, no. So it's it's one of those things like you can make that move out to L.A. to say you live in L.A., but the comics I know in L.A. are the ones who are always on the road because you don't make money in L.A. unless you're already a big name. Uh, you Dane know? Cook or Chris yeah. D'Elia. Yep, those guys, because those guys live in L.A., make their money, and they'll swing in and just do sets. And why is any club going to pay you any real bucks when they know they got these guys swinging in? You know, who was it going back and forth for a while? Was it Dan Cook and Chappelle going for the longest set at the comedy store? Yeah. Like, one would swing in and do seven hours, and the next one would swing in and do, like, 12. That's crazy. And it's like... (laughs) Crazy. Yeah. So... 
you know, that's all. That's a whole thing. You you gotta decide when you're ready to move. Even What's preacher, that? even preacher went out to L.A. like three years earlier and was back within what four or five months. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, he went out to L.A. the first time and nothing was working out for him. Came back and um, you know pounded and did the grind. And when he went back this last time, when he went back this last time, he was ready. You know, he had a festival win under his belt. He had Florida's funniest competition under his belt. You know, so, yeah. Is there a rule about going to festivals? Like, uh, about, like, what if you bring your girlfriend? Like, don't bring the girlfriend. I heard that. Like, is that a rule? I don't know. Why would you bring your girlfriend anywhere? Is That's why would you bring your girlfriend any stand-up yeah. of yours is, is the real question. Yeah. I feel bad when I bring her. You know, man, it's it's almost like you got to imagine that going to going to comedy, going to do these gigs is like going to your job, like any real job. Do you bring your girlfriend to the office when you're always you know, accounting? Gotta keep an eye on that bitch. <laughs> 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 yeah, I've seen her. She's definitely do better. You should keep an eye on her. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, no, I mean, she, she's good looking with a career and she hangs out with you, but whatever, you know. Hey. Um, <laughs> yeah, you better be buying extra Valentine's Day presents tomorrow, <laughs> man. You better get everything on her wish list. Her wish list? Yeah, yeah. She, anyways. But, yeah, man, I think that's part of the thing. Like, what we do is fun, but you really have to some days keep the mindset, or all the time keep the mindset that this is work. Yeah. You know, this is your job. Like, you were just telling me about a guy this weekend who lost his job because what? Like he Lost his shit on stage. Because he was drunk, or he got drunk before I don't know if show. he was drunk, or he was just sick of comedy, but he was just like, fuck this, fuck you, and, like... Like yeah. started yelling that he doesn't need this shit. And doesn't yeah. do this. And uh, he, he walks out. I feel like that a million times. <laughs> but like the thing is, you bottle it up <laughs> and you, the show, the show goes on. I like know? how somebody, they said that uh, when he was walking out, like mm-hmm. he was storming off the stage, some dude in the audience was like, cut that guy off. And then, <laughs> and then he turned around. He's like, I can go buy liquor at the liquor store. And then oh kicked the bucket. That was, I guess like a laying around Jesus and then Christ. stormed out. <laughs> Oh. And that's in like the first five minutes of the show. <laughs> He's a host. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking lost it. And he told uh, everyone to fuck themselves that, and love. That's like the level you're at when you've been dealing with shit for like an uh, hour, you know? He did like the, like on half day, fuck you, fuck, fuck you, you fuck you're fuck cool, you. I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. <laughs> oh man, I can't. Yeah, but. So yeah. he's gone. Yeah. Um, um, so there's a new host date. Of, I mean, host uh, spot available. Hands are kind of tied at that <laughs> point, right? <laughs> I still want to hear the story, like what led to that. I want to know who's Yeah, I got to look up who was there. Yeah. Who did the guest spot or who did the feature? Yeah, I'm sure we'll hear about it. Oh, I can't wait. And there's video, supposedly. Mm-hmm. Like someone videoed it. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I can't wait for that. that and will I'm be begging. About, that will it's sad that that guy's written a ton of good jokes, yet the most viral video he'll have him is the one of him shit. just losing his shit. And uh, the person that told me will not release it. And I'm like, please <sighs> release the video. Well, did you ever see, uh, like, if you uh, if you Google heckler <laughs> battles on YouTube or something, there's a guy that had to be from the 80s who was a guitar comic, and he was just up there. He's oh, and he smashed the guitar <laughs> on oh. the person's head? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not video. saying the guy didn't have it coming. But what I'm doing saying is I, l- y- you gotta, uh, I, that was, <laughs> so uh. the, the guy, the comic in his defense, after he's holding his shattered guitar, it looks like he tries to tune it, even though it has no body <laughs> left. And then he tries to get the audience on his side. He's like, come on folks, you're on with my side. You And someone shouts out, no, that was wrong. <laughs> and he's like, all right then. <laughs> <laughs> fucking honky tonk that guy man. i would love to see the woman like in the defense video with the two guns showing us how to defend ourselves <laughs> against an angry comic if he has a guitar to your head and his partner has a guitar to your belly here's how you disarm and restring it oh man there, did you see the one where the guy is uh he's doing his set and it's in a bar setting and then the dude walks up on him and then he just front kicks the guy in the chest Oh yeah, yeah. And then he goes back to finishing his set. <laughs> that that was out in Las Vegas. Okay. That was right off, um, right down the road from. Oh jeez, the Flamingo. I believe it was down the road from the Flamingo. So it was right off the strip. And a buddy of mine is actually friends with the guy who runs that open mic. And the thing I hate about that is every scene has that one or two guys who come out, and they don't bowl, they don't have a you know they don't have a lot of 
they're older guys who this is their night out. They're not looking to make it big and they're not looking to be, but this is how they enjoy themselves. And what I felt bad about is you could just kind of tell that the guy who got front kicked was the guy who just shows up. He knows he's never going to be a comic, but this was, he, he <laughs> well, you felt bad for the guy that I got felt front kicked? I felt horrible for the guy. If it's the same video, he was wearing like a little tinfoil hat looking thing. I was think. he? Yeah. I felt, cause the guy had to be like 50 I would've, I would've and his too. wife, cause the host was a younger guy, like probably mid twenties. Yeah. And uh, he's like, don't come up here. He's like Bill or Steve yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Don't Dale, whatever it was. He's like, don't come up here. If you come up here, if you come up here kick your and ass. you can hear the older guy's wife go, don't do it Dale, or whatever. And it's just walk, walk. And just it was and a 300 kick. Spartan kick him right in the mm, chest. This is very <laughs> good. And then he went back and finished his set. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the guy didn't Airlines. get up. Guy didn't get up too quickly, did no, he? Yeah. Yeah, he got, he got his mm. wind knocked out of him. That's sad, <laughs> man. That's sad. That's <laughs> sad. Like, I'm all for Why it. would you walk up on someone like that? I'm all for controlling your open mic, but at the same time, man, I'm not for kicking old guys. I'm waiting for that to happen to me. Yeah? Yeah. You've been waiting? I just want an old guy to curse me out and like, front kick him. Mm. <laughs> it's on the bucket list. You start beating him. <laughs> you never loved me, Dad. It's like you just got a bunch of misplaced aggression that you want to take out. Hopefully my memory comes back after I front kick him. Ken Miller and I used to talk about that. What? Like just misplaced aggression. He's like, he's like, man, you white people are crazy. I'm like, why? He's like, every serial killer is a white man. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's true. And he's like, why is that? I'm like, well, here's the thing. It's like if you ever see a serial killer, it's like if we have a problem with someone, we won't kill that person, but we'll kill everybody that reminds us of that person. Yeah. Like there's the guy that will go out and kill a ton prostitutes because his mother was a prostitute. Oh, did he kill his mother? No, she's living fine. She's <laughs> in Boca Raton. You know, <laughs> he just really resented her for being a prostitute. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Ken, you're mad at someone. You shoot that person. <laughs> You know, yeah. white people are like, all right, I'm going to take, take my prom everybody. directly with you. I'm going to take it up with everybody that reminds me of you. It's Jason syndrome. Yeah. That's <laughs> someone cuts me off in traffic. I'm not going to I'm not going to do anything now, I'll get but later. I'm going to get everybody that I'm looks plow like you. Into a, uh, yeah, I'm going to plow into a crowd at Disney for no right, reason. Right. Yeah. yeah. You guys are psychos. Yeah. Fucking white people. Fucking man. white people. Ruining everything. Have you guys done anything bad this week? Have we done anything bad this week? Hmm. I don't know. I can I can only speak for me. I've kept it pretty low key. <laughs> um, but we, well, yeah, we gave you the first gold of the Olympics. You're welcome. What do you mean? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, we, we got uh, the first USA gold with some kid uh, snowboarding, like a freestyle snor- snowboard snowboarding event. Oh, the Winter Olympics. Yeah, are going on? the Winter. I'm Olympics. not watching it. So. And uh, the best part about it was uh, this guy got the gold, and it couldn't have been any more American. Because uh, he overslept because he was up late watching Netflix in his <laughs> dorm room. Okay. Woke up late, uh, couldn't find his issued jacket, so he had to borrow his roommate, who was also in the special or the uh, Winter Olympics, borrow his jacket. Gets there just in time to compete. Uh, doesn't do too well in the first two heats. In the third heat, he does enough to like take over the entire field. And when he's watching the score come up. He goes, fuck yeah, holy shit. And they, even though it's on a timer, they didn't edit it. So that went across everywhere. And nothing says more American than. They got it on tape where he says that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nothing says more American than, like, uh, you know, everybody else uh, slept well the night before, was there three yeah. hours early, <laughs> His ass ate watching their Wheaties, Black, Black Mirror. <laughs> you know, had their PR people totally prime, had the jackets that had been issued to them. And they did their best. And this guy just walks in kind of like, yeah, I'm here. Was he <laughs> drunk or what? just he's overslept? Know. I don't know. But, um, oh, that's great. Well, we watched, the, we watched the clip. We watched a clip of him before we sat down, and he was doing some interview. And they're like, hey, what are you going to do if you win oh, the goal? The that was the kid. Okay. He's like, oh, I guess I'm going to, I don't know, I guess I'm going to. Look at it for a long time. Yeah, that's yeah. all I got. Yeah. I didn't know he did all the other shit. I felt like he was high then during the <laughs> interview. And then the, they're like, what else you got on the agenda? He's like, well, you know, I'm gonna, as soon as this summer's over, whatever, I'm going to gonna really get to work on that homework. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm my go- God. And he, the way he said, I'm going to graduate high school this year. And people were like, you know, it was a bunch of 40 and 50-year-old interviewing him. And uh, they're like, well, yeah, you sh- you should. But the way he said it was like, we're like gonna the ch- second time. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, I'll, I'll get him next time, boss. <laughs> he was expecting them to like break into like cheers. Yeah, 
Yeah, good like, job, We're going to lower taxes. He's like, I'm going to finish high school. They're like, yeah, yeah, that would be good for you. Be, <laughs> how's the gym been this week? You get beat up by any kids? Nah, man, I've been lazy. Really? That's what I'm telling you, man. I feel like uh, my energy's shitty. Yeah, so what do you do? Do you have, like, back in, uh, when I went to school, the teacher was hungover. We had video day. Like you just walk in we the do stretch day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was just gonna say, do you have a? Do you, and they hate it. They're like, God damn, Kermit was out drinking I again last I, night. <laughs> I stretch, and then all of a sudden, you just see me just kind of like ten seconds. <laughs> all right, go to your left, <laughs> and, I, and I close my eyes. And I look like I'm really stretching. All right, down in the middle. That's great. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a stretch day. Has anyone picked up on what it's really about stretch day? The students haven't. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. They're like, oh, okay, I'm really working out. I just got to be like, you guys got to stretch to have high kicks. Just, <laughs> so it's literally an hour of stretching. <laughs> it's an hour of class. It's like oh a yoga God. class. Jesus Christ, you're an asshole. I know. That, but I don't do that often. But if, if it was a day, I just every don't Every Tuesday, because Monday, Monday night's I mean, late. <laughs> <laughs> it's because Saturday, Sunday, then Monday. Yeah. Yeah, it's just stretch, stretch it. day. Yeah, man. There's nothing wrong with it for an hour. Yeah. At least 40 minutes of stretching. Yeah. How long is the usual class? One hour. That's it? You pick them up from school? Pick them up at school. Mm -hmm. They come to the school. They do their homework, eat snacks. Oh, you make out. them do their homework? Yeah. Oh, make them do their homework. so you're like a real after school type thing. Well, we promote them to do homework. So you can't say you mm. make them do homework. Yeah. Or because they're then we uh, become a... Um, we're not teachers. Like, you're not accredited. Right. Like, you never passed seventh grade. So. Right. Like right. Because, for whatever reason, you can't really help kids do their homework because right. you're not a certified teacher, you which can, is such bullshit. You can, yeah. It makes no sense because, like, um, no, feel happy, dude, because every now and then I got to help Ian with his homework and I got to Google how to do that shit now. Yeah, He's only in second grade. It's horrible. But oh. they, and they give him so much homework, but then, like, uh, let's say if, uh, like, somebody called, um, I don't know the department of whatever, but education. Yeah, they could be like, "Is X Y Z doing homework there?" And I'm like, "Yeah." Are you a certified teacher? I'm like, "No." Mm -hmm. Well, then you can't be, and I can shut you down. Like, oh, bitch. Wow. So now I'm like, I'm a karate school, and I just, I just. We allot time for them to do yeah, homework if they would like. If they like to. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, that's it. Aiden is. I'm so glad he has his mother. Like, uh, his mom became a stay-at-home mom last year okay so for like uh for like kindergarten and everything and i would pick them up and stuff like that and now she gets to spend more time and she actually has her degree in elementary education so she's there to help him out with stuff which is which is great um but i i feel bad because like on the days i help him with his homework it'll be something like complete this math sentence and it will have y x plus three Three two B C, and I look at him. I'm like, <laughs> it's a trick question. That's not a sentence. It doesn't have words in it. <laughs> Write down trick question. <laughs> trick question. <laughs> Complete this math sentence. Done. You know. And then uh, <laughs> one day we were sitting there, and the <laughs> this was in kindergarten. It was like, okay, uh, all you got to do is no. This might have been first grade. All you have to do is here's the word and count out the syllables. You know, by clapping and then write how many syllables. So like, say we have Valentine's. Valentine's. So, what? Three syllables, right? Right. And Which is uh, uh, so annoying. Day. day. So you write one. Then weekend. Weekend. And then crayon. They're going to make your kid autistic. Uh, no. What I realize is I've been saying crayon wrong my whole life. You know crayons? Crayon. Yeah. Crayon. 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 It's two syllables. Crayon. Yeah. Never knew that. <laughs> called it. I've called it crayon. I'm like, pass me the blue crayon. Right. My entire life. And you know the worst part? Nobody's ever fucking corrected me. <laughs> I think because I said it with such conviction. They were like, give him the blue crayon. <laughs> so I didn't know crayon was a two syllable. So I actually had him write one and then it came back wrong. And then I had to explain to him that I don't know how to Wait, do it. Wait, so do your kids now clap when they talk? No, it's just it's when you're learning your words. All right, that's just syllables. I can just imagine the kids no, have an OCD not, now. No, they're not like freaking Brazilians <laughs> walking through the theme parks. Got to. <laughs> Be annoying. <laughs> oh God! Shove that flag up your fucking ass. Oh my God, man. No. So yeah, I feel a little sorry for him that he's got a he's got me as a father some days, but we're doing the best we can. So. <laughs> you, you and your uh, your sh your angry teaching ways. 
I just want the best for him. He's <laughs> yeah. actually uh, this. He brought home this envelope the other day, and they're actually uh, the envelope was they've been screening him for gifted classes, and they okay. just they just wanted to let us know that so far he's all passed, and they do another screening at the end of this year, so he might be. He might be moving into gifted classes next year, which would be a shame for me because I can't handle the shit he's doing now. You know, you know, it's funny. Back when I was going to school, gifted means you're stupid. Really? Yes. Yeah. I think that's what your parents told yeah, you. Yeah. Like to my make dad you... would say that to me like, yeah. oh, because you're gifted. And I'm like, what does that mean? Yeah. Like, Whatever. Smart ass. And he walks <laughs> off and I'm like, I think he just called me stupid. <laughs> so, so all those kids who ended up going off to Harvard and having real jobs, you're, you're like, those were those idiots in those <laughs> gifted classes. I swear, I thought gifted for the longest and then it's dumb. <laughs> like, oh, he's special. I think, yeah. Like that, there's, like that. A, there's special. Which, special gifted. Which they had shit. special ed classes. Yeah. Or I believe it's called ECL, <laughs> yeah, ECL. right? So you, in so special. you thought gifted and special were the same yes, thing? Yes. That I makes thought. you special. <laughs> That makes you so special. I special and gifted were the same shit for the long. Cause oh my like, god! Because people would be like, "Yeah, my kid's gifted." I'm like, "Oh, he's retarded." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh." Okay. <laughs> they're like, "My kid's gifted." You're like, "Well, here's a couple of bucks. We do this thing uh, for autism. If you guys want to come up, we have a comedy show for autism. Ha ha for autism. Yeah, <laughs> gifted w- show. We haven't done that since uh, Gary Menke. Uh, we haven't done ha ha. Do not speak autism. of that name here. No, why not? <laughs> no, Gary. You know, a lot of people. A lot of people. Gary gave a lot of people their first opportunities and took a lot of people's, took a lot of people's money. <laughs> but no, no, no. I mean, yeah, it is what it is. You meet people of all kinds in this business. Yeah. So, oh, well. Well, I thought gifted meant dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes you special. special. <laughs> so how were your grades in high school? Were you good? Oof. No, college was not an option. Was that the type of? Uh, I was just a shithead, man. Yeah. I was a shithead. Yeah. I got my shit together in my senior year, mm-hmm. but it was a little bit too late. A little bit too late. I was yeah. dumb. Mm-hmm. So I had to get a two. I I, I graduated mm-hmm. for attendance. <laughs> they gave me a they gave me attendance. Right. And I had to pass the FCAT. I couldn't pass the FCAT. Uh-huh. So I passed school, mm-hmm. but I couldn't pass the FCAT. Right. So I had to take. I, I had to hire a tutor. Mm-hmm. I finally passed the FCAT, and then I graduated. Yeah. High school. It, it's funny. My best friend in high school and most of my life uh, uh, was Cuban, and we took Spanish class together. And he got busted cheating off me in Spanish like three times. And <laughs> he's sure a natural. <laughs> he's a natural Spanish speaker. And uh, he told me he's like, our teacher though was a woman who had studied Italian, then learned Spanish. And he used to tell me he's like, Mike, you don't understand. He's like, learning Spanish. He's like, it's called Spanish in this class. But he's like, but you would get the shit beat out of you in Miami if you spoke like this. Oh, yeah, for sure. He's like, uh, it, it's the equivalent of you going to English and not understanding because they're speaking in Shakespearean <laughs> English. He's like, yes, this is all Spanish, but this is actually Spanish from like Spain. Spain. Yeah. So did you take Spanish classes and stuff in high school? Um, Yeah, I did. Do you speak Spanish? Are you fluent? Yeah, I speak and I understand it. I speak yeah. with my parents mainly. I don't I very barely catch me uh, speaking outside mm-hmm. unless like it needs to be done, like getting pulled over or some shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my buddy, it's like uh, he was his house was like my second home and my house was like his second. Home. You know, his parents were my parents. My parents like we, our parents were allowed to beat each of us respectively. Like his parents had given permission for my dad to smack the hell out of him and vice versa. Right. But it's like I always knew when it was serious at his house because we'd all be sitting around having fun time and everything else and then all of a sudden people go right into Spanish and I'm the only white guy in the room of like nine people. They're talking shit about you. They're talking shit about me (laughs) or it's just shit I don't need to know about but every now and then you hear a gringo pop in there. I'm like, yeah. Or you need to leave the house. Yeah. You need, they're trying to get you out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's I, I always cool. like it. I like that you guys have that special. Co- In fact, the only reason I've ever wanted to learn a, a language like uh, what do they call it fluidly be yeah. fluent in something is just because the amount of times I feel people are talking shit about me in a language. I just want to be able to turn in like in every movie but where you're like, you got to be careful now because white people, white people are learning shit. Either they're learning or they're just Hispanic, but mm-hmm. they look white. <laughs> like uh, I was in a car one time with my buddy and uh, this dude walked across the, the road in front of the car mm-hmm. and he had a huge nose. Mm. And my buddy's like, Chacho, I mean, that's a nari, you know, which means, oh, my God, look how big that nose is. 
and the guy punches his, my, my buddy's car and goes, Get carajo, pasa con mi nari. He's like, What the hell's wrong with my nose? We're like, Oh shit. Whoa. <laughs> We're like, Whoa. Nothing. Oh, wow. Nothing. Wow. Thank you, Rosetta Stone. <laughs> and, uh, did you see those things? Like, I thought they were like science fiction, but the little ear pods that are like real time translators now. I want them. I do too. Yeah. I no, do too. They, uh, Apple needs to make them for the Air- AirPods. AirPods. Yeah. Yeah. I want to yeah. check that out and see how well it works. Like, for a while, I've been watching the videos for the past couple of years. I'm like, okay, it's futuristic technology, but now I guess they're for sale. I'd love to I want them so actually bad. try them and test them. And, you get your taxes done? Because I was just thinking, we were talking about this. I'm like, maybe we should order these for the studios. And then if we get a sponsor, we can write this off as a, <laughs> you know, d- did you? You got your taxes all done? Yep. Nice job. You do them yourself this year? No, I got a, I got a lady that does it, but uh, mm-hmm. apparently Trump hooked me up. So Really? Yeah. What was your hookup this year? $980. Wow, nice, man. Yeah. Nice, yeah. Uh, I was shocked. I was like, oh. Yeah, I, it's been a it's been a confusing year for me because last year I sucked. because uh, yeah, the guy who done my taxes, I've known this guy for over thirteen years. He started out as a bouncer of mine at a bar I worked at. That's <laughs> always reassuring. Yeah, well, he was ex-military. He started out as a bouncer okay. I worked at a bar I worked at. Then he went off, and because he had um, what is it, post-traumatic stress disorder, he had the GI Bill. But usually that's very specific about what schools you can go to. But because he had the uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, they verified or they found that he couldn't go to a large college like UCF. So they actually paid extra money to let him go to Stetson and DeLand, which was a better school, you know. And he went and got his accounting degree from there. So he went from my bouncer to my accountant. (coughs) And he's done my taxes for me for like the past 10 years. And he's he's always been an awesome friend and a good accountant. And uh, he passed away last year. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, it was, it was unexpected. It was too soon. He was a great guy. But he passed away. And I remember talking to his brother at the funeral. And I'm like, you know, this is really, you know, Matt was a great guy. Love him to death. We've lost a great human being. That's the post that you posted yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. Oh, you can explain that photo, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I'm like, yeah, we lost a great human being. But more importantly, uh, I don't know where I can get an accountant that will hide my shit for beer <laughs> money. Because I used to drive up, and I would want to pay him. He would do all my taxes, and especially, you know how comedy is, man. It's, it's not just a straightforward, like, I don't get W-2s at the end of the year. It's all 1099s, miscellaneous income, stuff like that. And you got your deductions, your traveling, your food, your hotels, your stuff like that. And he'd pff, knock all that shit out. And I'd be like, well, I owe you. He's like, yeah, just buy me dinner. And we'd go have a couple of steaks, a couple of beers. We'd go bar hop in. It was a great time. And uh, now this is the first year I'm doing the taxes without him. But it's also the first year that I'm claiming the kids under my taxes. And I'm just all... Yeah, you get your going out of my mind, and I also not knowing how he's done certain things the past few years makes you, <laughs> you, should, actually, you yeah. should actually paid attention. So yeah, I think I think my post was actually last night. I was just fed up doing my taxes. And I'm like, dude, if you happen to be a ghost and you want to come yeah, back and you want to haunt me, feel free to come and bring my 2015 tax return because I don't know where we put strip club cover charges as a <laughs> deduction. <laughs> By the way, in that photo, mm-hmm. it's you holding a sledgehammer. Yep. Your buddy's yelling at the crowd. Looks like a countdown. He's doing like mm-hmm. three, two, one. Yep, yep. That's my buddy Brian Shaw. And then there's a, there's a naked dude with a huge belly mm-hmm. laying on a bed of nails mm-hmm. holding a center block. That's Matt. That's Mongo. What AKA the hell Mongo. was going on there? Well, uh, I don't know if I told you this before, but um, I used to be really into like sh- sideshow arts and circus <laughs> stuff. Like yeah. That's where I learned to fire eat and walk on broken glass and the bed of nails and everything else. And a buddy of mine, uh, Louis Rios, and I used to go out to like beach towns like St. Augustine and Mallory Square and uh, Pier 60 out in Clearwater. And those places have what's called sunset celebrations. So think of like New York when you go through Central Park, you got the guys busking, doing magic, making balloon animals, stuff like that. You could actually do that at those places every night at sunset. So um, at that time, I was bartending and everything else, and my buddy Louis was my bar back. And we would go out to Tampa. We'd set up, go out for the weekend and just do a whole bunch of little shows like sideshow, sideshow stuff. You know, we do fire eating. I do a couple of uh, close up magic tricks or escape stuff. And then we do the bed of nails at the end. uh, The bed of nails is the only thing out of all that that doesn't require any real skill 
other than you got to hold up with some discomfort, you know? Okay. So I would put Lou on the bed of nails, put a cinder block on him, and then I'd break the cinder block with a sledgehammer. <laughs> and then that <laughs> specific people. time you saw there, uh, Matt and I were actually uh, doing, I believe it was a charity show at a place called Gators Dockside, where we just brought out the stuff to do like a small little sideshow stuff. But especially around Halloween, we, we would go around doing these charity shows and fundraisers and stuff like that, doing all sideshow stuff. So, um, you know, when Matt passed away last year, we'd been putting out photos and everything else. And uh, when I was looking for a photo of him to go with that, I just realized I had that one in store. <laughs> so it doesn't go with the storyline whatsoever. But, um, yeah, I was just missing him last night. That's all. So, yeah, I, I still got the bad nails at the house. So I think what we got to do is when we finally organize this whole sparring, chi, pan burrito, we'll also have the bed of nails thing. And what's funny is we kept the bed of nails at a bar I worked at. And sometimes at closing time, you know, you kick people out because you can't sell liquor anymore. But sometimes you're like, ah, you pick certain people to stay around for an after work drink. And, uh, you know, we just told everybody that, you know, whoever wants to stick around, if you want to stick around, you got to lay, lay on the bed of the nails. And, um, yeah, I don't know how this started, but like people, when I used to do it, they used to think I had a board in my back or something. So okay. this is back before I was weighing this, I used to be like, oh, I'll take off my shirt, lie on the bed of nails. And I don't even think I mentioned it, but people started to assume if you wanted to hang out to drink afterwards, you had to lie on the bed of nails topless. So, which was, we didn't stop anyone, but the guys did it. And then the girls would go to do it and we're like. That's funny. So now everyone's pretty much half naked laying on a bed of nails. Yes. <laughs> like for a drink. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think we should bring that back. I think you just sanitize that thing. Mm -hmm. that, that thing. When's the last time you sprayed that thing down? Oh, my God. I don't know. It's probably got, uh, it literally probably, it's been sitting in my garage. It has cobwebs. You probably want a tetanus shot. And then tetanus shot and STD on it. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever lied on bed nails? Yeah, the fake ones at uh, fake nails at like Wonderworks. Yeah, Wonderworks. Where they're like comes wooden up. dolls. Yeah, yeah, it's I the same it. thing but less comfortable. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I think we use we have nine hundred and ninety seven, I believe they're eight inch galvanized roofing spikes. Yeah, I put every single one in by myself. So. See, that doesn't sound safe, man. Yeah, I don't know, dude. Because you made it. What? Yeah, like how? What's what's your credit? Like your credentials on making a bed of nails? <laughs> Um, I'd like to bring you back to last week when a uh, Pinewood Derby car <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> I made from scratch uh, placed second overall first year out, first in Tiger's division and best paint job. No, but you made a bed mm. of nails before there was YouTube, so there's no instructions. Uh, I'm not that old, man. But, I mean, can you if, you, if you really think about it for a second, bed of nails. Yeah, can you think painful. of, can you... Can you think of anything easier to make for your first real construction? Yeah, but like, isn't it? It's, you it's you can't just use any nail. Why not? What do you mean, why not? I mean, we didn't. The reason I got the longer nails is because they, you know, I was already in my head thinking of, okay, we got to make this look good from a distance. <laughs> so it's heavy as fuck, though. We should do a burrito eating challenge on a bed of nails. I'm down. <laughs> I'm down. Let's do it. I don't know how the hell that's going to happen. But I don't know. Or we can just put the pan burrito on your chest and I'll and smash, then smash it. it with a sledge. It's going to turn into a Gallagher I'm going to actually die. That's what's going to happen. You're yeah. Gonna smash me like through a Mortal Kombat scene. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But yeah, it's it's still there, man. And the kids are asked. Uh, Aiden's asked about it before. You know. Oh, he does. He, he's like yeah. looking at it. it looks yeah. Like your, your garage looks like a torture chamber with the bed of nails pretty much dude but you know i i feel like as long as he's on the path of being smart i don't have to show him all these scammy ways to make money like sideshow arts and comedy and bartending yeah <laughs> like buddy go go get a not that bartending hey all king aside um bartending and comedy have paid my bills and you know i'm very happy and thankful for that but you know you always want better for your kid and I think I got into comedy thinking it'd be easier money. And then when you realize it's probably one of the tougher things you'll ever do because the being on stage an hour a night is the easy part. And that's, that's what sucks when that part goes wrong because that's the easy part. But the, the everything else, the endless booking. Uh, Pat Garrity and Ricky Rays, we were just talking about them. They actually just started putting out a bunch of videos about oh, the travels, yeah, yeah, and uh, it was done really well. Like, uh, you know, 
Uh, so if you want to check them out, Pack Arity, I think it's pgroaddog at gmail.com something or like something that, like yeah. that. Check them out. Uh, if you have any interest in being a road comic, talk to those guys. Cause those <laughs> They'll let you know what you should keep, <laughs> keep your day job. But, man, yeah, you think about it. You're like, oh, man, I'm going to go live the easy life doing comedy. And it's like, dude, I could have been a doctor. <laughs> well, that's. No, I actually, um, my first. Uh, that Indian. My first p- partial scholarship from high school was for law studies. I was the. 1994 Florida State Mock Trials Competition Defense Attorney of the Year. Sounds important. It was important. (laughs) It was up in Tallahassee, Florida. And what you went up to the Capitol and you actually did like three days of mock trials in front of real judges. Like you, all these high schools were given these cases and you had to prepare prepare a defense side and a prosecution side. And you would go in and you didn't know what side you had to do till that day of. And I didn't know this at the time. I was in law studies in my high school. I didn't know this at the time. There was a high school in Miami that specifically, you know how like fame in New York, that that high school for like arts? Yeah. There's like a law high school down in Miami where they take this shit from day one. So you're going to be a lawyer. There's a, quite a few of those. I didn't know about any of that. I was a public school kid. Oh. So like I go to it and... We, uh, yeah, I won out of all the high schools in Florida. I won the best defense advocate. And if you want to see some parents get pissed at their kids for letting a guy, that was the first time I wore a jacket in my life. You were, you were in a high school law study mm-hmm. at 30? Law studies class, what? How old were you? What? Wait, I lost That you. was 1994, oh, so I was sure. 17. <laughs> I was 17, <laughs> jackass. I was like, <laughs> <sighs> I was like this fucking guy. Yeah, I know. You you, you would have saw me in my Lost Eyes class. You're like, oh, that's one of those special kids. He's gifted. <laughs> He's gifted. My God, you're a retard. <laughs> can we say that word anymore? That would clarify a lot of things for you. I feel like it still can be used. Though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they have Asperger's. No, it's I mean, not Asperger's. It's Asperger's. It's Asp. It's Asperger's, right? It's not Asperger's. It's not? No. What is it? You act like you're driving up to Checkers being uh, like, hey, man, give me a number two uh, cheese with the Asperger. And what is it called? Asperger's. You just said Asperger's. No, it's a P. It's not a B. Asperger's? What, are Damn. you going to spell it out for me? What well, are you? I mean, yeah, apparently, we need to. Well, you say it. Say, a- say it. Say Asperger's. 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 Like I'm asp. saying it exactly how you're saying it. Asperger's. Asp. 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 <laughs> Can't you hear that? Look, look there you go. Aspregers. Pregers. <laughs> Aspregers. Aspergers. Aspergers. Yeah. Aspergers. There you go. Aspergers. We might not be educating anyone but you. Today. A disorder where your kid's an asshole. Ah, <laughs> damn it. Is that what it says? <laughs> this is the last time we go to this site. <laughs> I thought it was Asperger's. For the I know. Audience. I know. Every time you've said it, you know what it is? It's the same way no one corrected me on crayon. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> just let him go. He's never getting any game. Your, your kid's an Asperger. Oh, you know, Asperger's the other word I have problems with, idea. Like idea? I, I'm like, I got this great idea. I idea. got this great idea. And I said it my whole life and finally started hanging out with some people who took it upon themselves to correct me. And I used to say anyways a lot, too. I'm like, anyways, anyways, anyways. And one night, Ken Miller's like, dude, you know it's anyway, right? There's no such word as anyways. I'm like, yeah, it's like any way with an S. It means more ways. Like, anyways. And he's like, no, man, it's just anyway. And I'm like, oh, Ah, okay. I get the idea. He's like, it's a, it's idea. I We've been idea. Being, like one night, Ken Miller, the king of abonics, just decided the to correct king me. King of abonics. <laughs> decided to correct me on everything, and I, I don't know where I picked it up, and I felt like a moron. And then this year, I went home for Christmas, and we we're sitting around with my mom, and my mom's like, "Yeah, it was tough coming up with ideas for you guys." I'm like, "You? Yeah. It was fucking you." It's say Cran. What? Say Cran. <laughs> Cran. <laughs> yeah, that's where I got it. <laughs> So well, did you really re- just write down Asperger? Yeah. <laughs> and you spelt it wrong again. I realized I put it R- too many R's in Asperger. Oh, my gosh. No <laughs> Asperger's. So what we, what we got to get going in this place? <laughs> Asperger's. <laughs> now you're making fun of my kid? <laughs> now you're making fun? You're so gifted. You know who's special? You're special. You're special. Yeah, we're, 
we're, so we're an hour and 23. What? Yeah, man. This one's going to have to get chopped. I, I went like that, and you just kept going. So I was like, all right. Oh, I didn't. Uh, usually you do the little, like, uh, right, 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 right I down there. I did, but I, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll chop something out of this. Cause we'll chop, I don't know what we'll chop out. Probably Asheville. <laughs> nah, that was one, like, good thing we were talking about. Mm. So. All right, we'll figure we'll it find, out. We'll find something to chop out. The beginning, like always. <laughs> well, there's definitely the beginning. The, probably this part right here. So. And this part. How about, we, uh, how about we do this, like, uh, okay, we'll get into like, uh, hey man, well that's, uh, well I think let let's see we covered basically everything. Uh, this is gonna post the day after Valentine's Day, so or a little bit after, or a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we're going. Are we going for a time? What's our time? That I try to get these out by Thursday. Thursday around what time ish? Night. <laughs> nah, I don't know. I think we gotta do like three o'clock. It's easier said than done. I know, cause you do all the work, so it's <laughs> easy for me to say anything, but. Yeah, I like it. Like every week, we're learning a little something. Are those headphones? Those are headphones. But those are headphones that won't fit into this thing. I don't know about that. Hmm. So like, I could, I could have probably used those. I could have probably been using those. Actually, I have another pair of headphones. I realize. <laughs> God, I hate you. I, have, I actually have three pairs. I'll show you after. All that. right. Well, you know what? We're gonna be back next week. Uh, yeah. yeah, this has been the uh, obligatory podcast with Kermit and Mike. Thanks for listening in. Uh, give us some feedback. You can find me on uh, the web at Mike Herlihy. That's M Y K E H E R L I H Y dot com. Uh, check me out on Facebook. I'm still going to figure out Instagram. I'm working on it. I actually opened the app this week, so I'm, I'm feeling pretty proud of myself. Um, and, yeah, I'll see you next week. If you're in the area, make it out. I'll be hosting the open mic uh, tomorrow, but you won't hear this till Thursday, so that does you no good. No. Uh, next week, I'm hosting the Young Guns show Wednesday night at the Orlando Improv. Got a lot of uh, great up-and-coming guys on that, and I'm the old man of the bunch hosting <laughs> it all, showing these whippersnappers a thing or two so uh that's it for me kermit anything you want to say nope i have nothing scheduled nothing planned mm -hmm. um you can find me on social media kermit l gonzalez or you can find me on xbox as the ghost pig but that's what i'll be at this week <laughs> playing xbox <laughs> really <laughs> i have an xbox and i never play any online anything maybe i need to get into that Maybe. I Maybe mean, I need to pick. It sucks your life away, and you realize how much. That's why the videos don't come out on time. So video games <laughs> are like kids, is what you're saying. They're just gonna suck the life yeah. out of you. Yeah. I, no, I'd like to give it like a try when you do that. Like, what's that called? When you're like like a five guys on a team and you're all running around with guns. I've never done that. What's that called? Yeah, <laughs> you sounded so old on that one. <laughs> yeah. What's that called? Like when we did it, it was called Contra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh. I mean, there's tons of games. No, yeah. like that first player type thing. Yeah. I, yeah I first person shooter. Yeah, I want to give that a shot. All right, I got Even you. Even though I get motion sickness, I'd have to stop a couple of times to take I, my Dramamine. I don't think you can handle the games I got, but okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, one more thing to add to the challenge list here <laughs> at the Obligatory Podcast. All right, until next week, I'm Mike Hurley. And I'm Kermit. See, See you ya. later.